Hi, my name is Steve Ibsen, a registered nurse with the Department of Health, and today is uh, February 13th. This uh, recording is meant for clinicians as an overview for the Utah Medical Cannabis Act. Uh, I will not read every slide. Please pause and read the slides as you feel you need to. This is meant to be a brief overview uh, of the Medical Cannabis Act, which should take about 20 minutes. Also wanted to point out the fact that if you are a provider in a multi-provider practice and would like a live uh, presentation at your office, please contact us to set that up. This slide is a slide that uh, really explains to me and others why the Utah Medical Cannabis Act will be one of the best medical cannabis programs in the country. We'll have well-trained medical professionals, qualified medical patients who will receive quality controlled medical cannabis products from licensed pharmacists in medical medicinal dosage forms. This map just goes over the legality of medical marijuana across the United States. You can re review that yourself. This is another important slide, the transition phase slide. The trans we're currently in a transition period. This transition period lasts through December 31st of this year. What that means is medical cannabis cards and qualified medical provider registration are not required during this transition period. Though the Department of Health encourages registration with the department as early as uh, March 1st and is required for the Compassionate Use Board use and petitions and also for entering medical cannabis pharmacies when they open. This slide is a high altitude overview of, of the responsibilities of the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health. The top three um, boxes are the cultivators, the testing labs, and the processors all fall under the responsibility of the Department of Agriculture along with tagging the plants. The Utah Department of Health is responsible for the electronic verification system, the inventory control system, the medical cannabis pharmacies, the associated couriers, home delivery, and the walk-in pharmacies, as you can see. On the next slide, you'll see the qualifying conditions. I won't take the time to read all those. You can read those. I want to point out the paragraph at the bottom though, individuals who did not have a qualifying condition listed above, but they and their provider want to uh, consider using medical cannabis, they can petition the Compassionate Use Board for a condition not listed above. An example of that might be sleep. And then also, the last sentence in that lower paragraph, all patients under the age of 21, regardless of their medical condition, must have their applications approved by the Compassionate Use Board. The Compassionate Use Board is comprised of seven board certified physicians and at least two have to be pediatricians. Uh, the board is currently organized. We had our first meeting in October and we are ready to review applications as early as March when we will be receiving the petitions through the electronic verification system. Again, both providers and patients need to register with the Department of Health beginning March 1st of 2020 and we will be ready to review the patient petitions as I said in March of 2020 we already have a meeting scheduled and we'll have meetings more often if there's enough uh, need for the review of the pent-up pent -up need for the petitions now the qualified medical provider let's see uh, we'll go to this slide the qualified medical providers this is a really has a lot of information, so I'd encourage you to read the whole slide. I'll, I'll cover it in part. Uh, in order to be a qualified medical provider in the state of Utah, you must be a licensed physician, a physician assistant, or APRN, licensed in Utah and have a controlled substance permit in Utah. You will also need to complete four hours of con continuing medical education that the Department of Health has uh, approved. To get a list of those, you can go to our website, drill down under continuing ed medical education, and find a list of the four approved sources. Now, on the third bullet uh, 
point down, you can see the, the primary care physicians, physicians, assistants, and APRNs are limited to 175 patients at a time on medical cannabis, so they can be treating no more than 175 at a time. Certain specialists, you can see in that same paragraph, who have American Medical Board certification can receive up to 300 patients at a time to begin with. And if needed, they can work with Doppel to see a total of a, up to 600 patients at a given time. Now, the last bullet point on the left is important to point out that uh, there are some advertising restrictions for QMPs. They cannot advertise, they recommend medical cannabis, or that there are even a QMP. They can communicate on a website with a green cross, a list of qualifying medical conditions they treat, and or scientific studies regarding medical cannabis use. The bottom right uh, bullet point is also important to point out. In order to be a QMP and recommend to a patient, you need to have an established physician or clinician patient relationship with the patient. When a qualified medical provider recommends medical cannabis, they may choose not to specify the dosage type and dosage amount. If that's the case, they'll be required to upload information into the electronic verification system and that uh, responsibility can be done, completed by a pharmacy medical provider, or the pharmacy medical provider will review the medical records listed in the electronic verification system, and may also call and consult with the QMP as needed regarding the dosage, the, formation, the formulation of medical cannabis and any potential adverse side effects or concerns they might have. This is an important slide. These are the legal medicinal forms of medical cannabis in, that can be used in Utah. You can read those. I want to point out that no edibles can be used in Utah other than the gelatinous cube, the top right uh, as noted. And there's edibles such as cookies, brownies, milkshakes are not legal in Utah. Flour cannot be used in Utah unless it's contained in the blister pack and there's no smoking of medical cannabis in Utah either. Here's a picture of some of the medicinal forms you can review and look at that are legal. This slide is lists those prohibited forms that I talked about. As far as dispensing limitations, the medical cannabis pharmacies can dispense up to 30 days of treatment for a patient. 30 days of the medical cannabis, whichever form and dosage they'll be utilizing. And it's limited with 113 grams by weight of unprocessed a cannabis in a blister pack, or no more than a total of 20 grams of total composite THC. You can see the map of the state of Utah with the pharmacy licensing uh, requirements. It's important to note that uh, we have received the applications, we've reviewed them, we've selected the 14 pharmacies who will be operational and they're in the licensing process as we speak. And once they complete the licensing process, they'll have a year to open their pharmacy locations. This slide goes over some of the requirements of the locations for the pharmacies. So you can read that. The next slide talks about Utah Medical Cannabis Pharmacies. These will not be similar to dispensaries that you might walk into in other states. There's uh, advertising limitations they'll have. They may have signage that includes, again, a green cross, the name of the pharmacy, the hours of operation, and uh, products and services that are available, along with educational materials that they'll have. Uh, the next slide talks about uh, the pharmacy standards. All pharmacies will have a pharmacy medical provider in them at all times during business hours. Now, a pharmacy medical provider can be a Utah licensed pharmacist, a DO, or an MD. And they will have registered with the department and completed the required continuing education hours as well. All employees at a pharmacy must be registered uh, 
as pharmacy agents or PMPs with the Department of Health, medical cannabis specialty pharmacies that will have in Utah may only sell medical cannabis products, the devices, and the educational materials, so they won't be like your Smiths or your Walgreens that you're used to. And in order to enter the pharmacy, you have to be a cardholder with the Department of Health, patient cardholder, that is registered with the Department of Health. Medical cannabis pharmacies will be equipped with security system. Uh, use of medical cannabis on the premises is not allowed. They cannot give out samples, and they must follow the labeling requirements. Products sold by pharmacies must have a label on them placed by the processor. This label will clearly display the amount of total composite THC and CBD in milligrams on it. We'll be required to have unique ID numbers so we can trace it back to the original plant if needed. Uh, and uh, they cannot display anything that would be appealing to a child on the label and so forth. Container labels for medical cannabis products, once they are being dispensed by a pharmacy, will be quite similar to the labels you're used to with your usual medications. They'll have your name, address, date of sale, directions for use, and cautionary statements, if any. The state central patient portal will be open by July 1, 2020. And this will allow cardholders to contact, find information to contact the uh, medical cannabis pharmacies in Utah and links to where cardholders can order the product online and be connected with uh, the home delivery service as an option should they choose. The state central patient portal will allow cardholders to contact a uh, medical provider hired by the state who can counsel them relative to the use of medical cannabis products. The dosing parameters can be provided if they're recommending. QMP chose not to do that. And they can be submitted to the electronic verification system so the patient can go to the pharmacy and obtain their product. Home delivering is an option for patients who choose to. And that will be through pharmacies who are registered as a home delivery medical cannabis pharmacy and have ties with the courier services to do that. Medical cannabis shipments are shipped to the person's home must be accepted in person by the cardholder with a verified photo ID. Electronic payment is being explored as an option by the state of Utah, but because cannabis is still illegal under federal law, most cannabis-related businesses still conduct business with cash. If we're able to proceed with electronic payment, we'll have the Department of Finance develop some rules and protocols for us to follow. Disposable, disposal of medical cannabis product and waste will be carried out within the pharmacy, so if you were to try the medical cannabis or a patient were to try it, say, hey, this isn't for me, they could return it to the pharmacy where they can put it in a locked box where it'll be safe and safely disposed of. Any product that might expire or have any other problems can also be uh, disposed of by the medical cannabis pharmacies following state, federal laws and rules regarding such. Okay, the fee schedules. This is an important one for the clinicians. Uh, qualified medical providers and pharmacy medical providers. Initial registration is $100 and it uh, is good for a two-year registration period. And then the renewal after the two years is $50, and that will be for a two-year renewal as well. Patients' initial cannabis patient cards will cost $15, and then they're required to renew again at 30 days. That will be a $5 renewal. And then after that 30-day renewal, if they go six months, there will be a six-month renewal every six months thereafter where the fee is $15. The Cannabinoid Product Board is a result of the Cannabinoid Research Act, House Bill 130, which was passed during the 2017 general legislative session. 
and developed a board comprised of seven members, three medical researchers, four physicians, and one member that must be a member of the Controlled Substance Advisory Committee. This board meets monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly, and uh, some of their main goals are to review the um, conditions and products available and to ensure their safety and efficacy, including uh, dosage amounts and medical forms, interactions between cannabinoid products and other treatments and medications and so forth. One of their main goals is to keep this as safe as possible, do no harm. Cardholder non-discrimination. For purposes of the medical care, a patient's use of medical cannabis is considered equivalent to the use authorized by any other, of any other medication by a clinician. And then also it entitles uh, state and local governments to treat um, their employees that use medical cannabis the same way they would treat the employee who were to use opiates or other controlled substances. Here's our timeline. I'm happy to report that uh, we've met our, all of our goals as far as the timeline goes. You can see Currently, we're in the month of February, and we're now receiving manual registration applications for QNPs, pharmacy medical providers, and pharmacy agents. Please go to our website and uh, identify the forms that need to be completed and complete them as needed. It's a short process. You'll download the forms, fill them out, and return them along with your a proof of or certificate of completing the continuing medical education hours that are approved and pay the fee and then our staff here at the health department will upload this manually into the EBS and it'll be ready for your use come March 2nd, Monday, March 2nd. I want to be sure to remind you that again if there are any patients who are you, viewing this uh, slideshow, please do not uh, take it upon yourselves to use medical cannabis without talking to your medical provider. You need to be registered and consult with your provider in order to do this because medical cannabis or cannabis can be affect your balance, lead to increased risk of falls, can be problematic with patients with heart disease and strokes and cause uh, sedation and other problems, interactions with uh, blood thinners, uh, benzos, and others, so it can be problematic. So please uh, consult uh, your medical provider before you use any medical cannabis or recreational cannabis to be safe. And again, you can contact the Department of Health here if you'd like to uh, have any questions answered or if you'd like to have a uh, live presentation at your multi um, multi-provider practice would be, would be happy to do so. Thank you very much.